In this video, we will discuss base emitter current. Now, uh, in the previous video, what we calculated or what we derived is an expression for electron current uh, flowing uh, through the device. So electrons are injected from emitter into base and out to collector. So that is the collector current as shown in this diagram. So these are this diagram here shows all current components that can flow in your BJT. So the current that goes from collector through base out into emitter, which represents the electrons flowing from emitter through base and out to collector. That component, this big component, thick component, is the collector current I sub C. There are additional uh, current that can flow in the device but not reach the collector and that is a collector flowing only between emitter and base as shown here and there can be three different components here but before we discuss these individual components uh, that make up the base emitter current uh, notice that the collector current here depends on the voltage four bias voltage between emitter and base so your emitter and base uh, represents the control terminal and your collector terminal represents the output terminal. So any current that flows between base and emitter represents an input current and um, in order to have a small input power you would like to minimize the current between base and emitter. And that obviously leads to large current gain uh, and therefore a desirable transistor performance. The base emitter current has three components as I mentioned here. So they are the recombination of injected electrons with holes in the quasi-neutral base region. So that's this component here. Electrons are injected and recombined with holes in the base. Um, second component is the recombination within the depletion region or space charge region um, between base and emitter. And the last component is the hole injection. Uh, the, the base is a p-type, so uh, holes from p-type will be injected into, uh, into n-type. So there is a hole injection current. These are the three components. Um, most transistors are, uh, that are based on silicon um, have a very, very small recombination in the space charge region. Silicon is really pure, very, very high quality, so the recombination due to any defects or anything like that can be ignored. So we can ignore the second component, the recombination within the space charge region. The recombination within the base region um, can be expressed by this equation here. So this is basically the um, uh, integration of the recombination rate. So this uh, numerator here, n, is the actual carrier concentration, minority carrier concentration. and the Ni squared divided by Na is the equilibrium minority carrier concentration. So the numerator here simply represents the um, excess carrier concentration um, and divided by the uh, carrier lifetime tau sub n uh, is the recombination rate. So if you integrate the recombination rate across the base region, that is the total current, recombination current. and in order to minimize this uh, recombination current, obviously, uh, you want to minimize uh, the base region. So make the base region very narrow, very short. Um, in the case of uniform doping, you can uh, write down the expression for this excess minority carrier concentration. Um, that will be simply given by this. And so you can do the integration and you end up with this equation, simple equation for the recombination current and the uh, loss of carriers in the base region due to recombination is measured by, is characterized by a parameter called base transport factor and we, we write it as alpha sub t and it's defined as the total electron injection minus the recombination divided by the total electron injection. So this basically the numerator represents uh, the fraction uh, uh, the, the part of the current that survived that did not recombine divided by the total uh, inject, injection current. Um, so you want this number to be as close to 1 as possible. In the uniform doped case, we derived an expression for I sub RB in the previous slide. 
use the equation that we derived in the previous video um, and you can write down uh, a simple expression for the base transport factor as shown here and uh, you can obviously improve this by reducing x of b, the base region width um, and uh, it also depends on the, uh, the diffusion length of, of, the, um, of the minority carriers. This factor uh, is uh, once again for the uniformly doped case and it will be better if you do a non-uniform doping. Now the last third and last component of the base emitter current is the hole injection from base and this is usually the, the biggest factor uh, in, in typical uh, transistors. Um, the the electron, uh, the hole injection current, uh, you, we already uh, derived this expression for the ideal PN diode, so we just take that uh, from the PN junction uh, discussion. Um, if the emitter region is long, long compared to the diffusion length of the, of the holes, then we use diffusion length here in the denominator. If the emitter region is very short, then of course we need to replace this with the actual emitter region width, x sub e. Um, in, in most integrated circuits, the emitter region is, uh, emitter length is small, but they are usually doped non-uniformly. So when you have a non-uniform doping, uh, you will have a built-in electric field, and because of the built-in electric field, you will have both drift current and the diffusion current uh, within the emitter region. So first you need to know the built-in electric field due to non-uniform doping, and if you recall the, our discussion on the non-uniform doping, the built-in electric field is uh, uh, proportional to the gradient of your doping density. Um, and so when the uh, base emitter junction is forward biased, then the total field within the emitter region is this built-in field plus any additional field due to your, your biasing. Um, so the total hole current can be expressed by this, uh, this, this uh, drift current uh, where the carrier concentration will be increased from the equilibrium value by this uh, uh, extra excess current due to hole injection. And your electric field, of course, is the built-in field times any additional field due to biasing. And then the second term here is the diffusion current. And once again, we separated out the carrier concentration into the equilibrium plus the excess. So you can simplify this into this equation here, and you can uh, you can rewrite these uh, these this equation for the hole current as a derivative of the excess hole concentration times the doping density in the emitter region. So when the emitter re uh, emitter length is very short, short compared to once again the diffusion length of holes, then the hole current will be independent of the position, um, just like the short base diode, and so we, we can integrate from x sub n, which is the depletion region edge um, of, the, uh, of the emitter side, and then x sub e, which is the end of the emitter region, then uh, you can obtain this equation here, and we use the result of the step junction. Um, from which, from which we remember this excess carrier concentration is simply depends on exponential, uh, exp depends exponentially on the applied voltage for bias voltage. So from this, we finally arrive at this expression for the current within a uh, whole current in the emi emitter due to whole injection from base into emitter. Okay. Now, um, the effectiveness of emitter junction um, in injecting electrons. So you want your emitter junction, emitter base junction, to primarily inject electrons and not really inject any holes on the other direction. So the effectiveness of that is characterized by emitter injection efficiency. Uh, gamma is defined as the electron current, electron injection current, divided by the total current, which is the sum of electron injection current plus the hole injection current and 
uh, from the equation that we derive here, your gamma can be written here in the case of the of the uniform doping, um, and it depends on the ratio of the diffusion length, but also it depends on the ratio of the gamma number or the doping density in the base and the emitter region. Now, there uh, finally we know two possibilities uh, for. Uh, uh, for, for deviation from the equation that we have derived here for the emitter injection efficiency. First is when your doping is really, really heavy, then there is an effect called the band gap narrowing. So due to the, due to the heavy density, large density of dopants, the effective band gap of your semiconductor becomes smaller. And when your band gap is smaller, then obviously the I intrinsic carrier concentration is larger um, and therefore the, that leads to a higher hole injection from base into emitter. Also, when your carrier concentration is very high, then there is an additional recombination mechanism called OJ recombination that becomes very, very effective. So this leads to a very large recombination rate and that leads to the breakdown of the short diode approximation that we have used um, in, in deriving the whole current in the emitter region. And if you remember, the short diode approximation is to ignore any recombination in the region. Um, and that's a good approximation when you, your primary recombination mechanism is the Shockley hole read recombination. But if you have something like OJ recombination, which becomes very, very efficient at high doping density, then obviously that assumption can break down and the emitter injection efficiency will deviate from the nice expression that we derived in the previous slide.